All right, everyone, welcome to DrupalCon. I hope you all have had a good morning so far. I hope you attended the, the keynote session. Um, it should have been pretty enlightening, I hope. Um, so my name is David Needham. I work for Chapter 3, um, and this is beginner theming. Uh, can people in the back hear me OK with the mic? Do speak up? All right. Could we get the mic turned up a little bit? Thank you. All right. Um, so let me just start by introducing myself. Um, again, my name is David Needham. I work for Chapter 3. Uh, at Chapter 3, I am a Drupal themer and trainer. So that means I like to uh, make websites look pretty. And then uh, I like to go around telling people about how to make websites look pretty. And also just you know the basics of Drupal and stuff like that. Um, so. I've been working in Drupal for about four or five years or so, and theming was always kind of a mystery to me. Um, it, it was kind of a hidden layer of Drupal. It, it wasn't very intuitive to start. And so I always like to do these sessions on beginner theming because I feel like as someone who's been in it this long, I can give some perspective on uh, exactly how to get started with theming and then also um, you know, why you care about doing things a particular way. Um, so if you would like to follow along with the slides, you can. Uh, this is just a, a website on GitHub. So um, if you follow this here, you can uh, go through and click along with me. Uh, I am going to be doing a demo near the end. You guys don't have to follow along with that if you don't want to. If you happen to have something available, feel free. So uh, who is Chapter 3? Well, Chapter 3 is a company based out of San Francisco. Uh, we uh, have been big into the community for long before I was involved at Chapter 3. Uh, we put on or helped to organize uh, Bad Camp this last year and uh, this upcoming year as well. Uh, we hosted DrupalCon San Francisco in 2010. Um, and the truth is we're people who like to ride bicycles. Um, the founders of Chapter 3, after uh, they founded Chapter 3, went on and founded a, a bicycle company. Um, and so you can see uh, right on our website it shows that we have 1.7 bicycles per person employed in Chapter 3, and that's growing all the time. Uh, we also often get, okay, well, you know, you're Chapter 3, who are your clients? You know, are they academic? Is it government? You know, what is it? Well, and the truth is we have governments from all over, or we have clients from all over um, in all different sorts of fields. So we have, you know, technology, academic. Uh, there's all sorts of media and publishing as well as nonprofit and um, government. So you know, we, we at Chapter 3 like to cover the full spectrum of anything related to Drupal, um, all the way from you know, the basically conceptual data migration, data um, you know, planning, design, implementation, support, everything. Uh, so as I'm sure you can probably tell, I'm pretty excited about Drupal. I'm, I'm pretty passionate about theming. So um, I might talk a little bit fast. I might use buzzwords or something that you may not recognize. If that happens, um, definitely feel free to shout out or you know, whatever, get my attention, tell me to go back. We are going to have questions at the end. So if you do have questions specific to what we're talking about, um, definitely, you know, hold up, wait until the end if you can. So I get this question a lot, um, usually outside of Drupal, but sometimes inside of Drupal too. It's like, wait a minute, themer, what, what is that? You know, you say it's your, your title, you know, what's a themer? Well, a good way that I like to look at it is a themer We'll take wireframes or comps, usually made in Photoshop or um, fireworks or something like that. Um, either designed by me, designed by our designers, designed by clients, who knows. And then we take some code, usually HTML, CSS, um, sometimes PHP and jQuery. If you don't know PHP and jQuery, don't worry. It's not something you need to get started. Uh, we're going to be touching very, very, very briefly on some PHP today. Uh, but don't let that intimidate you. It's going to be very easy. So once you have the wireframes and you've put in some code, you sprinkle a little bit of theming magic on top, and you have a website that looks pretty close to the comp, fully functioning, and uh, looking exactly how you expect it to. So the point of today is to kind of peek behind the curtain, look at what this theming magic is, look at to see how you create a theme from scratch and how you tell Drupal um, how your theme is going to work. So another question I get all the time is, what is a theme? Well, you know, that might be kind of straightforward, but a theme is basically something that takes 
Drupal's default markup, um, Drupal's classes, Drupal's IDs, Drupal's functionality, and it makes it look pretty. <laughs> That's the simplest way of putting it, really. Um, it, when Drupal is rendering things to the page, there's this last point where it asks, okay, theme, is there anything that you want to do before this could print it on the page? And the theme says, well, yeah, actually, I'd like to make this purple, and I'd like to make that green, and make it this size, and print this here instead of there, and do this and that. And so the theme is really the, the last call before the page gets printed. So in my opinion, the themer, the person making the theme, is actually the person who has the most power in this design, this uh, Drupal implementation process. Because at the very end, it's up to the themer to say, yes, this gets printed, no, that doesn't get printed. Um, also, there's this whole concept of sub-theming in Drupal. Um, this is an incredibly powerful uh, tool uh, in Drupal, and it's, it's really great, especially for people starting out, but even um, you know, experienced Drupal themers such as myself use sub-themes. Essentially, if you follow along with the diagram here, Drupal spits out its markup, its code, its content, its classes and IDs and those things, and it says, okay, is there a theme? Yes, okay, great. What does the theme want to do with this stuff? And so it spits it down there and it says, oh, thank you, Drupal, you know, here's my extra markup, here's my uh, little bit of PHP, my jQuery, here's my, my CSS styles. And then it checks and it says, oh, is there a sub-theme? If there is a sub-theme, the sub-theme says, hey, thanks, I want everything that you've done so far, but let's make these few little changes. So it's really, you know, if, you, if you're familiar with CSS, it's cascading style sheets. It's kind of this process, this system of overrides. Well, Drupal theming is exactly the same way. It starts at the top, what Drupal spits out to you, and it gets overridden by the theme, and then if you have a sub-theme, it gets overridden by that, and you can have multiple layers of sub-themes as well. Um, this could mean that you're, you're starting with a theme that already sort of looks like what you want. You know, maybe you want to uh, use the built-in you know, Drupal 7 Bartik theme. You like it, but you really want to change one little thing about it. Well, you could use a sub-theme here to uh, say, okay, well, use Bartik, but I want to make this change. It's just one little thing. Um, it could also mean that you want to use maybe something like Zen or Omega. Those are some themes that are designed specifically to be base themes. So they don't have much style around it. It doesn't define things like you know, font size, font color, you know, how things should look, but it, desi it designs the, uh, displays the, the layout for you. It keeps things organized. It gives you some tools to, to build upon. So if you are, are brand new to theming, which if you're here, I assume you probably are, using base themes are incredible. Um, again, just to recap what I said, the, uh, Zen and Omega are the two most popular, but if you look on Drupal.org, you do a search for base themes, there's tons of base themes you can choose from. I'd also like to cover briefly um, some of my favorite theming tools. So, uh, starting at the very top there, um, admin menu. This is a, a module that I hope you've all been using. It's, it's a great module that's been around for many, many years. It, it gives you that little black bar at the very top of your, your Drupal site. And Drupal 7 comes with a little black bar at the top already, it's called toolbar. Um, but unfortunately, it doesn't give you the, that drop-down functionality. And I, I feel like with admin menu, it's the same thing, but it gives you drop-downs. And it really makes it uh, much more easy to get to exactly where you're going. Um, so you can look through and you can find what you're looking for and you can click it instead of having to click around even more. There's also uh, Firebug and an Inspector. Um, if you are used to front-end development, if you're used to um, you know, using CSS and stuff, you've probably already heard of these. But basically, Firebug and the Inspector, if you're in Chrome or um, other browsers, allows you to look at the markup, allows you to look at the styles, and then kind of change things dynamically to see exactly how things will look and how things are, why things are looking the way that they are right now. Also invaluable, incredibly powerful. Uh, next is Style Guide. Uh, Style Guide is kind of an underappreciated module, I feel like, but basically it gives you a page on your Drupal site uh, in the theme where you can find all of the default Drupal markup. So what this means is you can actually have a page, you, you may not have any content on your website yet, but it's a page that lists out what H1, H2, H3, you know, through H6 tags look like. 
what does the Drupal, you know, form field, what does a Drupal field set look like, what does a vertical tab look like, what is, you know, all those things. It's all defined on one simple page. So if you have a friendly designer on your team or if you're the designer, I find it extremely helpful to use style guide along with on that comp a style sheet, a style guide there um, that lists out all these things kind of side by side. So you can see what an H1 will look like on your website, H2, what a list, things like that. Um, and there's also Devel. Um, Devel is often seen as more of a, a development, you know, a module development tool, but it's also really great for theming as well. Uh, again, if you're, if you're theming a website and it doesn't have any content yet, it can be really hard. It can be really frustrating. You're trying to theme a, a view, you know, a list of content. You're trying to theme what an individual, you know, page looks like. It's, it's incredibly difficult. Well, Devel includes a, a module which will actually allow you to generate content kind of on the fly. So it's just simple, you know, basic uh, filler content that will fill up your site so you can test out your views, so you can test out these other things, and then you can theme right away. Uh, as well, uh, Devel also has a, a few helpful functions um, that we'll get into a little bit later. Last is Theme Developer. Uh, it used to be part of Devel, but they split it off. It's kind of like Firebug, but for Drupal, um, it's great for themers because you can click a button and then navigate around the page and look and see why exactly a particular thing is the way it is. You can look and see, well, which style sh or which, uh, which function is generating this pager? Which uh, template file is this particular title coming from? Things like that. It's, it's really helpful. Um, and as I said, we'll be covering all of these today in the demo, um, so that'll be fun. So I mentioned earlier I have a lot of passion for theming. I really enjoy theming, um, and I think it's a little lame whenever uh, people are using an, a, a, a theme and they're, they're kind of going along and they're, they're demonstrating something like this, and they call the theme something like example, example theme, a demo, demo theme. I, I think that's kind of lame. It doesn't really have any style to it. So quoting, or not quoting, but pulling from uh, Shakespeare from Romeo and Juliet, for the sake of this example today, my theme is going to be called Rose. So anywhere that you see Rose, you can insert the name of whatever theme you're building um, if you want to kind of follow along with that. Uh, another really popular question that we get whenever we do these uh, training sessions is, where exactly does the theme go? Uh, maybe you've downloaded a theme from Drupal.org or you're ready to start building your own theme. You might have looked at your, the root of your Drupal install and you see this very tempting folder called themes. You might think that you should put your themes in there, but that's actually not the case. Unfortunately, um, in Drupal 7 and previous, you actually have to put your, your theme inside of this file structure. So on your, in your Drupal root, there should be a folder called sites, and then within that, all, and then themes. And then within this folder is where you're, where you're gonna put all of your themes. Um, if you're installing modules, it's kind of the same thing. It's sites, all, and modules. Uh, this will save you a lot of hassle down the road when you go to update your version of Drupal, something like that. Um, unfortunately, this is fixed in the next version, Drupal 8, uh, which is gonna be out for a while, but um, it will be fixed for then. So uh, I mentioned we're using rows, so rows is the name of the folder, I called it. Uh, within this file structure, we can see some common theme folders and files here. Um, the most important one, the one that's only required, that's uh, the only one that's required for Drupal is rows.info, or it's the name of your theme.info. Uh, this file identifies the theme to Drupal. It tells Drupal some information like the name, the description, um, the version number, things like that. And we're gonna break that down in just a few minutes. Additionally, if you wanna include some of these other files, you can. Uh, if you include a file called logo in here, it will actually make this the default logo when this theme is being used. Similarly, there's a screenshot where if someone's picking a theme from the appearances page, uh, it will use this image as the screenshot of the theme. There's also template.php. Uh, we're gonna be digging into this just a tiny bit, but this is where all the, some of the more advanced Drupal magic goes. This is where the PHP goes of your website. There's also some folders here. These are kind of arbitrary. Um, you can name these folders whatever you want. You don't even have to use these if you don't want to, but I find it very helpful to have at least these three folders. Um, there's one for images, which is where all of your various theme-related images will go. 
Uh, there's one for styles, which is where all of your style sheets will go. And then there's usually one for templates, which uh, we'll talk about templates a little bit later, but it's where you put things like page.tpl.php or node.tpl.php or any other templates that you have. Uh, also, if you're using jQuery or you know, JavaScript, you might also have another folder for scripts, something like that. So because Rose is the most, in, or Rose.info is the most important file, um, let's just break that down, take a look at it to see what exactly we need to do um, to get it up and running. So I mentioned there's the name there. There's, um, we're just calling it Rose, that's cool. There's the core. This is the version of Drupal that this theme is made to run on. So 7.x means that this theme will run on any version of Drupal 7. Uh, if you needed to pick a very specific version of Drupal 7 or a previous version, you just change that, it's very simple. Uh, and then Drupal has some verification, uh, validation in there when you're selecting the theme to not let people choose themes that don't work with their version. There's also another uh, section in there that says engine PHP template. This is technically not, uh, not required in Drupal 7. However, some people have reported that they get weird bugs when they don't do this. So as a rule, I always, in, I always include engine equals PHP template. Uh, if you don't, it might still work just fine, but whatever. Uh, in your .info file, you also identify all of your style sheets. So for our previous example, um, I put the rows.css in styles, in the styles folder. So for here, I'll say style sheets, all, and then styles slash rows.css. Uh, to break this down a little bit further, style sheets, oop, <laughs> sorry. So style sheets um, is saying, hey, here's all my style sheets. The all section there is actually the media type. So if you wanted a print style sheet, you would just change this to print. If you wanted screen, you could put that to screen, whatever you need to do for that. Um, and then the next one is always blank. It's this weird array thing. Um, it's better just to ask, or not to ask about it and just always know that you have to. Um, also in the .info file, this is where you identify the regions that you're gonna be using uh, in this theme. If you're, if you're unfamiliar with regions, uh, regions are where you put blocks. Blocks are little code snippets. Um, you put them all over your website. This is where you can create new regions, take out old regions, whatever you want to do. It's, it's actually very, very easy to create new regions, and we'll be talking about that later because I know that's a very popular topic as well. Um, so here's just a few. There's header, very, very common. Um, you essentially say the regions, and then in the brackets, you put the system name. It's you know uh, lowercase, uh, underscores only. Header equals, and then the, the human readable name, header. Um, the human readable name is what's gonna show up on the blocks page on, in your Drupal administrative uh, section. So you know, this should be very plain, um, very simple for people to understand. There's also a help section. This is typically where uh, messages will appear on your website, you know, the, the error messages, the warning messages, things like that. Uh, there's content. This is where all of your content's gonna go. It's the main section of your page. There's also sidebar first and sidebar second, which is commonly the left and right sidebar. And then there's footer. Um, so out of these, um, there's only a few that are required. Content is definitely required. I believe help is also required. But the other ones are optional. So if you don't want a header, just don't include a, a, a header region there. If you want to add another one, you're free to do that as well. And then at the bottom, there's some additional uh, features that you can allow people to enable or disable. Uh, if you've ever been to the appearances page in your Drupal 7 website, and you click on settings for a particular theme, you'll notice that there's usually a bunch of settings at the bottom. There's, yes, I would like a logo, or no, I would not like a, lo a logo. Yes, the site name, no, I don't want a site name, things like that. Well, this is where you define if those options are available. So as a best practice, if you know that this particular theme does not account for things like a logo, it does not account for something like a slogan, like you just, you don't have it being printed on your page at all, it's a best practice to not include this feature. Because what'll happen if you include it as a feature and you don't account for it, someone who uses your theme is gonna probably try to enable it and it's not gonna work and they're gonna get confused. So um, always consider which features you include when you're building your theme. 
So now I'm going to move to the demonstration. Uh, hopefully this is going to be a, a very peaceful um, Drupal theming presentation demonstration. Um, so I set up a, a just a Drupal 7 install here. Um, it's very basic. It includes those modules I mentioned earlier. Um, there's some just very basic customization, but not very much of anything has been done. So let's get started just by digging right in. We're going to start creating our theme. So I need to open up my folder. I need to go to my website. This is the root of my Drupal install. I need to go into sites, all themes. And I'm going to create a folder which is going to be rows. It's just the name of my theme. And within that folder, I need a .info file. So I'm going to open up my code editor. I'm going to create a new file. I'm going to put it within my theme. I'm going to call it the theme name .info. And I'm just going to start putting in some of those, um, those fields that I mentioned earlier. So something like name rows. Uh, if you want, you can add, the, you have an optional description field you can put in. There's also core, which is going to be 7.x. There's engine. Okay. So far, so good. Um, something that you should know about Drupal theming. It's not always possible to memorize every single little thing. It's okay to cheat. It's okay to look and see what other themes are doing. It's okay to look and see what other modules are doing. Um, this is kind of a, one of the greater things about Drupal as well. So if you get stuck, if you cannot memorize this or you, know, you don't want to, feel free to look at another theme. You know, go into the Bartik theme. Go into some theme you've downloaded. Look and see what they did in this .info file or on PHP template or um, template.php or you know, any of those other files, feel free to go and take a peek. Feel free to you know, copy their code if you need to. That's something else I need is style sheets. It's going to be all media types. And I'm going to put that within a folder called styles and it's going to be called rows.css. So I'm just going to save this so far. Um, and actually, I need to put in some regions as well. Actually, I'm going to cheat as well. Let me. I'm going to include one for uh, content. And one for help. And that's all I'm going to put in there for now. So uh, this is in there. It's in my theme. Uh, it's in my sites all themes rows folder. Um, I currently do not have a style sheets. Uh, I don't have a rows.css that exists in there. So let's create that real quick. I'm going to create a new folder for styles. I'm going to create a new file. I'm going to call rows.css. And then inside of here is where I'm going to put all of my markup or my, uh, my styles for this theme. And so then if we jump back to my website, if I go into the appearances page and I scroll around, I see that I now have this new theme. It's just called rows, very simply. It has this description that I put in. There's no screenshot, which I mentioned if you include the screenshot, then it will uh, put in this, this screenshot there, but we're not going to worry about that. And then just to see what Drupal looks like with absolutely no style, with nothing like that, let's enable and set default. If I close the overlay, it'll refresh, and you see naked Drupal. It has no style. It's very ugly. It's not very cool. So that's all it took to make your theme. Very simple, right? I mean, it's just you define the theme. Drupal says, oh, there's a theme. Let me make that an option. You enabled it, and here it is. So now that you have your theme working, you can start styling parts of it. So let me jump back to uh, appearances, the appearances tab. 
Um, notice I am using the uh, admin menu here at the top. It has drop downs, so it makes it easy for me to jump straight to where I'm going. Uh, next, I'm actually going to demonstrate the style guide. If I go to style guide and then the name of my theme, uh oh. And if I just scroll down, I can look and see uh, basically all that markup that I had mentioned before. So I can see what a search box is going to look like. I can see what navigation is going to look like. I can see what um, all of my status messages are going to look like. This is, by the way, one of the, one of the things you can sometimes check um, to see if your website's using Drupal or if someone else's website's using Drupal. Try to generate a status message and see if it looks like one of these, like the default Drupal markup. Um, it also has things like links, emphasis, strong tags, um, all the way down, radios, check boxes, on and on and on. So it's a page full of markup specific to this theme. So it doesn't matter that we don't have any content on our website yet. I can uh, create this website from scratch. I can go to style guide. I can get probably about 70% done with the theme just by using this page. So you create the, the basic outline, you can style all the elements that are going to be on the page, and then you can hand it off to a site builder or a developer, or if that's you, you can start site building and developing uh, modules and kind of get the, give the website some depth, you know, give it some, some stuff to work with. And then after that's kind of in place and, and firm, you can go back and touch on theming, kind of theme the specific parts. So uh, just to demonstrate this, uh, let me just take a look at some things in here. So um, I would like to change the status message. Um, I really don't like that it's green. I would prefer that the status message was instead, um, let's say, orange. No, actually, that wouldn't work. Let's say purple. I would prefer that the status message is purple whenever that's uh, that right there. So I'm going to use the uh, firebug actually Firebug Lite if you're using it in Chrome, or you can use Inspector if you prefer that. And it's going to show me all of the markup on this page. Uh, it's also going to show me exactly what styles are affecting that. Um, so I can inspect. Okay, well, I'm actually going to be honest. I've never done this in Chrome before, uh, using the, the Firebug um, light. So let me jump over to Firefox. So I can see it right here. It is the message. So it has the class message and the class status. Um, the other status or the other messages here also have the class status, but they have other um, classes for like warning and um, error. Um, so it says here that the color for this is green. Well, if I want to see what that's going to look like as purple, um, I can actually change this on the fly. This is another reason why Firebug is so wonderful. Um, I'm just going to put in purple. See what that looks like. It's like, well, you know, that's not very good. Maybe, maybe it's actually pretty good as, uh, as green. So I'll leave that there. But maybe instead of, maybe instead of purple, I'll make it bold. I really want people to see what it looks like. So uh, let's change that to font weight bold. And yeah, I like that a lot. So if I jump back to my CSS now, you can see, okay, it's, messages status and if I go back to my website I refresh the page I 
to you that it's now bold. So if I uh, go to some other page, maybe I uh, click save on something, I'll get this status message, it'll be bold. So theming really comes down to this, this process of um, making things match the comp or you know, maybe if you build it yourself, making things match what you have in your mind. And you kind of have to do this iterative back and forth where you, you look at something on the page that you don't like, you look at something on the page that doesn't look the way you want it to be, and you see what you can target, you see what you can use to uh, change the style for. Um, you, once you see that, once you see something you like that you can you know, grab hold of, you go to your CSS, you go to your templates, and you start changing it. Okay, so I don't really like the way that this is going so far. Um, I don't like the way that this theme looks. It's very basic. I really want to start with something a little bit more finished, you know, a little bit more polished. So let's actually, I, I'm going to enable Bartik as a base theme. So if you guys are using Zen or Omega or if you want to use Bartik or whatever, this is exactly how you do that. Um, Bartik is already enabled as a theme. It's not the default theme, so it's not being used, uh, shown on the page. So if I go into my .info file, I can actually declare it. So I'll just say uh, base theme equals Bartik. Save. And then oops, if I go back to the website, refresh the page, probably have to clear the cache. Oh, it's freaked out about something. All right. Refresh the page. Okay, another thing you should know about theming is that you often have to clear the cache. Uh, clearing the cache is usually, it's, it's kind of like the process of restarting your computer if you need to kind of just start over from fresh. A lot of things get cached in Drupal and this is a huge blessing. It's, it's great because uh, it means that these things don't have to get reloaded over and over and over again. But when you're theming, it can be kind of a pain. So uh, if you're using admin, the admin uh, menu at the top, you can actually just hover over this first one here, click flush all caches, and we'll go through and do it. Okay, so that didn't work. So let me go back to my din dot .info file. And I'm going to cheat. It's okay, like I said. I still do it all the time now. Uh, I'm going to look at another dead info file. I'm going to look at the dead info file for it. And I see it, okay, so it uses a space instead of an underscore. So instead of base underscore theme, it's base space theme, Bartik. flush the cache, and now, except for that missing image, my website looks exactly like Bartik. Um, you're gonna get a lot of error messages when you do this from the start, and I can tell you exactly why. Um, so, if you kind of break down what this says, it, you know, there are notices, there are really errors. It says that it's not able to find particular regions in your theme. Um, the reason is because the, the Bartik theme has tons and tons of regions. It has, um, like, at least one in the header, and then, like, there's the triptych, which is like the three in the bottom, and then there's four in the footer, and then an actual foot. It's, it's a little obsessive. And, but anyway, so it's saying for each one of these, hey, I'm missing it, hey, I'm missing it, hey, I'm missing it. And that's because it's using all the default files from Bartik, but it's using your subthemes.info file. So in my .info file, I said, hey, I have these two regions. In Bartik, it said, hey, let's print these 15 other regions. And so there's this inconsistency. Um, so to enable to get this to, to behave in order to get it to, to be okay, what I'm going to do is actually go into the Bartik theme, I'm going to grab the regions that it's using for, um, for these here, and I'm going to put them in my .info file. So if I go back, I'm going to go to Bartik. Uh, Bartik is a core theme. It came with Drupal 7 out of the box. So it is in the themes folder, which is at the root of your Drupal install. That's where all of the core themes are. If I go in there, if I look in the .info file, I should see all of the regions. I'm just gonna copy them, put them up in my .info file, paste. 
And if I go back to my website, if I clear the cache, Okay, much better. So, um, so far, so good. It looks sort of like I, what I want. We still have the missing image, but it's pretty close. It's pretty close to what I want. Um, so, say for this example, you know, we're, we're have, we have some content. It looks okay. It's it's sort of what we want, but sort of not what we want. Um, maybe we want to change something like, you know, we, we already changed the status message, so it made it. Um, a little bit better, but maybe we really want this home, this this here, this breadcrumb, to appear in the header. You know, it's something pretty simple. You know, it's it's not it, it shouldn't be that hard to do, right? I mean, it's something like a breadcrumb. Where you're just going to move it from one place to the other. You know, we could do that in CSS. We could say you know position absolute and move it around and stuff, but that's not great to do. You know, so. Another great thing about Drupal theming is that there's a series of template files. So these template files outline exactly what gets printed where on the page. So this means we can actually take a look at what Bartik is doing. We can see where it's putting the, the, the breadcrumbs here. And then we can, all we have to do to make that be overridden in our theme is to copy it into our theme, make the change we need to make. Uh, it'll say, okay, let's use Bartik, great. Any changes, yes, here's a change. Let's use that one. And then it'll move it for us. So let's just walk through that step by step. Uh, first, I need to go into Bartik. I need to find page.tpl.php. Now, how do I know that it's page.tpl? Um, well, I've been doing it long enough that I know, but what if I didn't know? You know? How would I figure that out? Well, this is where that develop themer module comes in. Uh, develop themer is very helpful, but unfortunately it's still very buggy. Um, so I never leave it enabled. I enable it, I use it, and then I immediately go and disable it. It's, it's a little funky. All right, so now that I have this uh, theme developer, you should notice I have this little checkbox in the lower corner. It says theme or info. If I click on that, I get this pop up and it says, hey, click on an element. So I want the breadcrumb. So I click on that and it says, hey, this is ge being generated by theme breadcrumb in page.tpl.php. Pretty awesome. So I could either go back to my theme, I could go to Bartik, I can go and look for page.tpl.php, I can find it copy it, um, or if I want, I can just click on this link right here. Again, it's pretty handy. Uh, click on that, and if I click on um, the array here, I can see like everything that's being printed within that. Um, let's just ignore that. Let's go back to the Bartik theme. We're gonna look into templates. We're going to find page.tpl.php, and we are going to move that, I'm just gonna copy it and paste it into our theme sites, all themes, rows, templates. Again, remember folders are kind of arbitrary. You don't have to file or to follow a specific uh, folder pattern within the theme. Paste this here. So great. Um, back on my website. Notice it does say that it's using the page.tpl.php that's within themes Bartik templates. So it shows you exactly where this file's at. Um, and if I close this and I flush my cache, and if I use themer info on this again, you can see it's now using my page.tpl.php. So it says sites, all themes, rows, templates, page.tpl. So now that it's been overridden, now that the file is kind of my themes to play with, I can open that up and I can change anything I want and it'll use my version instead of Bartik's version. So let's close this, go back to, um, I need to go back to my theme and I just need to find where the breadcrumbs are at. So let's look down for bread and I'm just gonna take this whole thing right here <clears throat> I'm going to move it into the header. Page header above the main menu, that should be fine. I'll put that there, I'll click save. If I go back to my website and it disappears. 
here. Where did it go? Let's clear the cache just in case. I love it when this happens, by the way. I, I, love, I love when something doesn't quite work the way I expect it to because it gives everyone a chance to see what I use to, to troubleshoot. Um, you know what, let me turn off theme or info or theme developer real quick just to see if maybe that's causing it to mess up. No, okay. Let's, me, let's look through uh, with Firebug. Let's see if I can find where the uh, breadcrumb is being printed. Here it is. Interesting. Oh, oh, here it is. It was hidden. Oh, that's horrible. Um, so it's, it's kind of where I want it to be. I actually, I want it to be below the title. Um, so let me just jump back and change that real quick. Um, let's see. Just gonna move this. Oh, it is below the title. Hmm. Let's put it right there. Remember I said this is kind of an iterative process. So you go back and forth and you change something and then you go back and change something else and just kind of see, you know, kind of massaging it to work exactly how you expect it to. Um, so maybe it needs to be below this menu for it to work. That's probably right. So let me put it. It's not gonna work great either. Well, let's put it right here. And it's gonna break your tabs, yep, okay. Well, this is something you'd have to play with over and over again. Um, I don't really have time to dig into it much more than that right now. Um, but let's move on to something else. So page.tpl, we were able to um, move stuff around. So you can use this for many, many different things. You know, you can look at a particular node, you know, you can look at this, this content we created, you can use the theme developer uh, little targeting thing to find a very particular thing, maybe it's a field on a particular content type, and you can say, oh, well, where do I need to go to change that? Once you have that information, you copy that into your theme, you go and you change it, you move stuff around however you want it to be, maybe you wrap divs around it, maybe you add additional classes, you know, whatever you need to, to make something look the way you want it to. Um, so, there's something else I wanted to get into. I, I mentioned before that there's a little bit of PHP in this presentation. Um, actually, before we get to that, let me demonstrate Devel uh, Generate real quick. So, Devel again is that development module that helps you kind of troubleshoot things and figure out exactly, uh, you know, how things are running and kind of the development side of things. Uh, if you go into, if once you enable that module and you enable the Devel Generate module, which comes with Devel, um, you should have a new menu in here called development and then create stuff. Um, in this case, we don't have any content on our website. Uh, if we visit the front page, we should see that it's, um, there's the site name, but there's no front page content. Um, so let me just go and generate some, some front page content. I'll generate some articles just to put some stuff in there. If you go into development, generate content. You're presented with this page. Um, I don't want to create basic pages. I just want to see articles. Um, there's the option here to uh, delete all content before you do it. So this is great if, if you're like adding fields and you need to regenerate all of your content before you continue. Um, you can use this to kind of repopulate everything. This is also great if you are done with the kind of testing process and you're ready to start putting in actual content. You can tell it, let's create zero and delete all content so it'll delete all that content for you in one step without having to, to worry too much about it. So I want it to create uh, maybe uh, 20 articles for me as far back as one month ago. Um, I can even have it generate co comments. This is amazing. It means you can start theming and start planning for comments before uh, you actually have real comments in your website. It's another thing that's commonly forgotten. 
uh, maybe uh, 10 max for titles, maybe three. Uh, if you want to add a URL alias for those, you can. If, if you're using internationalization, maybe multiple languages for content, you can have it be generated in multiple languages. And click generate. It's going to go through, it's going to create each node for us. And if you close, refresh, you can see it did it. It even inserts images and files. So if you have, you know, images that need to be tested at certain image styles and, you know, thumbnails and big ones and stuff, you can do that with this as well. Um, so I can, let me just jump in real quick. I'll go into one of these. Um, I'll look and see. There's comments. So, you know, if it's not quite how I want it to be, I can change that. You know, I can start theming comments right away. I don't have to wait for that. Incredibly useful. Very, very great. So, um, not to scare anyone away, let's dig into the, the PHP now. So, you might have noticed back on the page.tpl, there, there is some PHP in here. Um, it's supposed to be intuitive PHP, like you're supposed to be able to see something and say, oh, well, this is the main menu. Okay, so this is the header region, okay. Um, this is the site slogan. You know, it's, it's supposed to be kind of intuitive, so it's, it's a little simple. Um, but as a rule, you're not really supposed to put very complicated PHP into your TPL files. Uh, the reason is, is that someone who doesn't know any PHP at all whatsoever uh, will come in here and you know, maybe they maybe they'll be intimidated by this, but if they see your complicated PHP, they're going to get completely like disoriented and you know, kind of locked down. They don't really want to continue. So, uh, if I want to create some custom PHP, some like a little bit complicated code, all I have to do is put that into my template.php file. Uh, so we don't have that on our theme yet. So I'm going to create one. Call it um, template.php. Okay, and um, so for, for this particular thing, I'm just going to demonstrate how to create a, a variable. Uh, it's pretty simple, actually. Like all those things on here are just variables, you know, like printing the site name, printing the title, printing the slogan. So let's create our own custom variable. Um, to do this, because it is this kind of uh, overflow cascading thing, um, we need to pre process, it's, it's a, a term in Drupal and theming. We need to pre-process the page. We need to say, hey, before this page is rendered, let's inject our, our uh, variable. Let's make that an option for people to, to print. So to do that, I'm just going to write a function here. You guys can, can watch and definitely use this as an example if you need to. Um, first is just the name of the theme. Whatever the theme name of, of yours is for your example, you put that here. And then pre-process page. And then I'm going to pass it a variable. Okay, so it's a little confusing at first. Um, if you need help to figure out exactly what you should see in here, um, you can jump to api.drupal.org. It's a great resource for figuring out what these functions do, what they're there for, how you can tap into them. Um, so, you know, I can just type in um, it's supposed to auto populate, but doesn't always do that, unfortunately. Um, so I can see here, um, here's that function that I was writing. It's um, template, so it's the name of the theme, underscore preprocess, underscore page, and then var or variables. Um, and then it gives you some examples of like what that should look like in there. So let me actually jump back to here. Let me go back to my thing here. And I'm going to um, use another great thing. I, I, one of the great tools about the Devel module is this function called DSM. It sets a message to whatever you put in here. So if I say something like, um, and I save this, go back to my website, flush the cache. Okay, so it did not like my template.php. You're absolutely right. Thank you. Noob mistake. Okay. So I forgot to wrap it in PHP tags. This is a PHP file, so it does have that in there. I need to also do function there. Okay. 
Let's test that again. Flush the cache. And I get a status message that says it works. So this is great for troubleshooting your website to see exactly if it's working the way you expect it to, if it's you know, printing what you expect it to. It's also great because say there's something kind of um, obscure like this vars variable. Well, what is, what's in that variable and what's, what's available? Uh, if I type in here vars and then I come back here and I refresh, uh, another great thing about this is it uses Crumo, which is this great way of um, kind of showing what an array looks like. So if you didn't use Crumo or if you didn't have uh, this part of DSM in here, it would be this long line of text that has just array, 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 and like all these different things. It's really confusing. But this actually breaks it down very, very simply. So I can look, in, look into the, the variables, I can look into page, and I can see all the variables for the regions here. Great, I can look down even further, I can see um, there is the site name, which we showed earlier. There's probably one in here for breadcrumbs. Um, so I mean, everything's available to us here. If we want to create a new variable, it's very, very simple. Go back here. We'll, let's uh, just go vars. We'll create a new variable name. So it's like my new variable. Okay, so my new variable, and then if I DSM, I go back to my site, and see it works. Okay, great. So now that I've pre-processed the page, now that I've created this variable, all I have to do is go back to my page.tpl, because remember this is a pre-processed page. So I go into page.tpl, maybe at the uh, very top, I'm just going to do a uh, PHP print my new variable. And let's just wrap that in H1, just to make it nice and big. So if I go back to my page, flush the cache, it works. So this is a very, very simple example of pre-process, but this is great because you can do things like build a uh, user block that checks to see, okay, is the person logged in? If they are logged in, say, welcome user, you know, with the username, click here to log out, click here to see your account. If they're not logged in, you could have it say, click here to log in or create a new account, something like that. So you can kind of create variables that have this complex code in there to, to kind of generate that, that markup for you and kind of do it dynamically on the fly. So I, I think that's actually just about all the time we have, but I think I can take a couple questions if someone wants to come up to the mic. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So uh, let me actually just jump to the last slide. So. This presentation uh, is, is logged on the Chapter 3 website. If you go to is.gd slash Denver theming, uh, you'll find the Chapter 3 theming page or for this presentation with all the resources um, that, uh, this is actually being screen captured as well, which will be posted later. So if you want to refer back to this, you can watch that on the website. Um, there's also I, kind of a funny story. I actually missed one of these sessions I was supposed to do for the Pacific Northwest Drupal Summit. Um, like my flight, Anyway, I had troubles, I couldn't present, and so I promised them a blog post that basically covered everything that we just talked about. Uh, that blog post can be summed up in the series I'm now writing called Level Up Your Themer, uh, which goes through like the different levels of themers and how to kind of move yourself from one level to the next, how to do things that, that a level two themer would do, you know, things like that. So if you need more information in a written with graphics and stuff format, uh, feel free to follow along there. Um, also, if you jump to, uh, if you go to the Denver you know, website and you, there should be a link at the top to provide feedback. I'd greatly appreciate feedback for this session. I know they would as well, just to let us know how we're doing. Um, and I also included some, some resources at the top which go through the slides that I covered today, um, the series and all those other things. So 
Um, there's that. Also, quick shout out to uh, Brian McMurray and Stephen Merrill from Treehouse. Um, they created this awesome presentation generating software, which runs on Jekyll and Prezi, um, to create this kind of on the fly uh, website presentation thing. Um, if you need more information on that, definitely go check that out. And there's, there's info on the website there, too. Um, yes, question? Mm -hmm. You mean the, the page.tpl.php? This one here? Template.php, yeah? Okay, so, so the question was, did I just put all of the variables into this here? Well, this function works by passing uh, an array through here. So all the variables are, are summed up in this bars variable here. Um, and so if I wanted to print out, you know, if I wanted to see all the variables, I can do that from here. If I wanted to change an existing variable, I could also, you know, declare that here and change it. But I just wanted to add a new one. So I said, within this variable, within this, um, within all that list of variables that already exists, let's add my own custom one. Right, you could add as many variables as you want. You just keep going down the list. You, like I said, you can redefine existing ones. Yeah. Yes. Yes, you, I, I would bet that there is a limit based on performance, but I've seen at least two deep, three deep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Right, and so just to re recap, the question was, can you create multiple levels of sub-themes? And yes, um, actually the Omega theme uh, is you know a, a great base theme for that. It, the Omega theme itself comes with a base theme that's called Alpha, and so Alpha is a very very stripped down version of Omega. Omega uses Alpha, which is included there too. So that Omega itself is actually a sub theme, which you're using as a base theme. So that's already one layer. So you can just keep going. You can create as many layers of that as you need to. Yes. When one page looks different, yeah. Mm -hmm. Right, well, so the question was, what if you need to make one or more pages look completely different from any other page? There's this great module called Theme Key, which if you need it to look drastically different, like if you need to use a different theme for a particular page of your website, Theme Key will let you say, on this page, use this theme. On every other page, use this other theme. If you just want to target a very specific page, um, Drupal gives you tons and tons of classes actually straight in the uh, body tag. So if you, if I jump in here, let me look at Firebug. If I go up to the body, I can see it's looking, in, um, so this is the front page. It says front. If I go to one of my other pages um, and I go to the body tag, I see it's not front, I'm logged in, no sidebars. It's using uh, the page content type, and it's page node one. So this is the first content, the first node that I created on my website. Uh, it should do this for pretty much every piece of content you create. So if you need to target something very specifically and say only on this page, make the titles green, something like that, you can do that by targeting it in the body. Um, I think that's all the time I have for officially, but if you guys have any more questions, feel free to come on up. Um, also, you can email me. It's david at chapter3.com. Um, it's, we at Chapter 3 have a, a policy where we can help people in the community with any questions they're having, so long as you post it on Drupal.org first. So if you post a question on Drupal.org, no one helps you or you know, if you just want to, send me an email with a link to that post, and I would be happy to, to try to follow up with you and try to work through uh, fixing whatever, or fixing or implementing or whatever example you have. So thank you all very much for coming. I hope you have a, a wonderful rest of DrupalCon.